What's up, beautiful people? Today we're going to be checking out Matt Walsh takes wrecking ball to preferred pronouns. Let's get to it. Whenever you refer to me, even if I'm 10,000 miles away, you must abandon the rules of grammar and parrot whatever gibberish I assign to you. That's not only absurd, it's arrogant in the extreme. Okay, the trans agenda has infiltrated our society largely through language. And I don't mean that the gender ideologues use language to make compelling arguments. Not at all. Rather, they, they manipulate language itself. They make it into their pet. They talk about preferred pronouns, but a pronoun is a grammatical construct. It has to be deployed according to the laws of grammar, not the fickle whims of the individual to whom it refers. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm, if I'm standing on this stage and you want to communicate to somebody else about the fact that I am standing on this stage, you will say he is standing on that stage. It would be grammatically and factually incor incorrect, excuse me, to say she is standing on that stage oh, as dang. she denotes a human female, which I am not. It would be incorrect to say they are standing on the stage as that indicates more than one person on the stage, mm -hmm. which there is not. It would be incorrect to say Z or Zer is standing on the stage because that would seem to suggest that there's some sort of space alien on the stage, which, <laughs> as far as you know, I am not. In a similar way, if I'm standing on a stage and I insist that my preferred preposition is off, it would make no sense for you to respect my preferences and tell everybody that I'm standing off the stage. Now, I may prefer the word off. I may think that I am off the stage. I may identify as somebody who's standing off the stage. But that doesn't change the objective fact that, that I am on indeed the on the stage. Mm -hmm. Prepositions, nouns, and pronouns, and verbs, I mean, unless they're used in a fictional story or poem or something, are usually meant to convey objective facts about reality. True. If they're not going to perform that function, then they no longer perform any function at all, and meaningful, useful words have been reduced to impotent nonsense. But shouldn't we just be polite and call people by their preferred pronouns anyway? Mm -mm. It's the nice thing to do. Can't regulate it. That's the problem. Well, answer no. And here's why. First, you don't generally call somebody a pronoun when you're speaking to them. If you want to address a person directly, you just use his or her it's name. name yeah. And a name can be whatever you want it to be. I mean, if a woman says her name is Fred or a man says his name is Sally, I'll call her Fred and him Sally because names are, by definition, personal, basically arbitrary Pronouns are objective and also generally more distant. You're usually called by a pronoun when you're not physically present for the discussion. So when somebody insists on a preferred pronoun, he's trying to prevent you from using proper grammar even when he's not in the room with you. He's saying, whenever you refer to me, even if I'm 10,000 miles away, you must abandon the rules of grammar and parrot whatever gibberish I assign to you. That's not only absurd, it's arrogant in the extreme. This is especially difficult for people who don't speak English as their first language, like it's not their mother tongue. So imagine learning English the traditional way, and then you move to 2023, you have to relearn all those things again. It's particularly difficult. He's trying to control what you say about him when he's not even in the room. That's not how language work, that works. That's not how grammar works. That's not how life works. It's not my job to enforce your self-perception. So you might see yourself as a woman, but that's not how I see you. And that's not what you actually are. And so I can't be required to affirm what I don't believe and what I know to be untrue. And further, it's not my job to adopt your perception of yourself. How crazy is it that, that this is what people think and that, we, that so many people just accept it? You know, um, as I explained on Dr. Phil, I might perceive myself as handsome and brilliant. Please don't laugh at that. <laughs> but I said, please don't laugh. <laughs> You're but I can't laugh. require that everybody who speaks about me also have that same perception. I can't say to you, well, I see myself this way. And so you have to see me that way. Again, that's just simply not how it works. My self-perception is not a project that the whole world has to take on. So that was another video by Matt Walsh. The man is always gonna hold his ground regardless of what you say. 
Um, I think he said, I would die to make sure this course does not advance. I'm just paraphrasing, but he made a statement similar to that. But yeah, as far as what he said in this video, I do not disagree. I believe grammar is a, is a construct, like people always use the argument to, you know, try to defend their, their, their stance. But even as that, it was made to describe something. It was made to um, describe objective reality or the truth. So when you use it the wrong way, or if you use it to describe something that is not objective or objective reality, then that becomes false. So you can't force people to use the wrong grammar. If I'm seeing A and you're telling me A identifies as B, it doesn't make any sense. Like already my head is, is not comprehending what I'm saying. I'm speaking to the camera right now, but my head cannot fathom that. And that's how it is, you know? You cannot force people to withhold something they don't see as true. Anyways, these are just my thoughts. I'm not a professional. Matt Walsh might be. Um, I'm just sharing my thoughts speculatively, you know. So feel free to talk to me in the comment section. It's the end of this video. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Have a very wonderful day. Peace.